Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's me, Mommy Sai, and, and Mata. Yeah, so we are back today to discuss a detailed labor and delivery video. Yep. We wanted to first and foremost thank all of you guys for all of the congratulatory comments and welcoming our daughter here. That's right, that's right. She was born February 4th, 2019 at 6.25 p.m. Yes, so okay. um, for you Remember that were following us, you know that she was due to be born on February the 1st. Yes. So we're just going to backtrack just a little bit. I know you saw some brief snippets, but because of the hospital rules and regulations, we weren't able to get all of the footage that we wanted to, most importantly, the labor and the, and actual, the actual delivery. delivery. Right. So we did show what we could show, but we're going to mm -hmm. go step by step. Right, so, you know, in the previous video, you guys saw we were doing a walk, and we were trying to induce her labor naturally by walking. We walked about two miles that night, but Munchkin wasn't ready. Right, and that night, ready. I was 40 days, uh, 40 weeks and two days and pregnant. Two days. Yep, on that night. Right, yeah. scheduled for an induction at 40 weeks, mm -hmm. three days. Yeah, yeah, we were scheduled for an induction on the third. Um, again, we tried our best, but hey, this one, we had to go get induced. Um, as you guys saw, we... Uh, out in the cab we went there we were positive the entire way but when we got there they, they actually separated us immediately right i couldn't even uh go as they said baby up and they ask all these you know i ain't gonna say weird questions but they ask a bunch of questions baby let them know what they ask right so when we went in at first we had my mother-in-law and taisha and um i thought i was gonna have to fill out like a lot of paperwork in the beginning because when we got um, we did the hospital tour. They told us that we would have to go in and fill out documents. But apparently, since I was a part of the hospital already, mm -hmm. they already had all of my information. Right. So immediately when we walked in, they made my wife and my mother-in-law stay in like the entrance level of the, the triage. triage. And they said, only you can come in. So I'm like so nervous. It seems like they were looking at us as if this wasn't our first yeah, go-round. first pregnancy, man. Our first rodeo. So I didn't know. Like I was like, what the hell? Like I have to come in here by myself. So she said not to worry. It was a really nice nurse, one of the plethora of nurses. Yes. And we'll get to that in this uh, story here. Mm -hmm. And she said, we're just going to set you up, get you set up on your IVs. And once we do all of that, they'll be able to come in. So right. I said, how long would this take? At this time, I'm texting babe. Like they said, it's going to be about a half an hour. I know what was going on. Right. So getting to those questions. So they immediately start telling me to disrobe and she said I would suggest that you don't put on your cute little gown because it's going to get messy and I'm like I insisted on putting on my labor and delivery gown it was so I, cute it was so cute I bought it for it yeah so they pull out a chart and they're simply like asking me some basic health questions like when did I become pregnant, um, you know, do I have any allergies and things like that. And then they started asking some weird questions. So they were like, um, what do you do in the case of an argument with your spouse? I'm like what <laughs> like I don't know where that came from but I was like well we don't really argue but if we have a disagreement we talk it out, talk it out. so right. she was like talk it out is the answer so I don't know why they were asking these questions probably to make sure that you're not in a domestically violent relationship or abusive relationship and yeah. that it would harm the baby yeah, I think it's all for baby's protection yeah you know which is great but again you know our first rodeo you know it's a little weird but we'll it was very time. weird yeah so yeah. moving on, I ended up getting uh, the IV hooked up as well as the, I was tested positive for GBS. Mm -hmm. So it's really important to know your stats yes. when you go into labor Please and delivery. Do. You wouldn't want to go in there and not know that. You know what I'm saying? You got to protect baby. Right. And I needed an antibiotic. Um, so they put me with the IV, the antibiotic and the compression um leg braces so that I don't get any blood clots right. in my legs and you guys saw that in the mm -hmm. quick snippet yeah, they saw that. They saw that. so now we're ready to start the induction okay and a doctor comes in who wasn't my doctor yet uh, they did inform me that this induction which we used Cervidil which is supposed to trigger your cervix to ripen well mm -hmm. I was already it was right, 50, but you were almost pretty much fifty percent of faced, right? Yeah. But we needed the cervix to dilate, dilate and open. Right, that was the issue. Right, so they told me that this process could be anywhere from twelve to eighteen hours, which I didn't know. I wasn't aware of that. I thought it was something that would happen quickly. 
Um, and so the doctor came in to insert the cervidil. And that didn't go so well, right? No, that didn't go well at all. At um, all. So it, it looked like this little, like, a piece of paper, right? Yeah, they and looked you like a... just fold a piece of paper up into, like, these little origami, little, like a fan. Yeah. And you insert it. But baby said it was very sharp. It felt like she was slicing her insides with a knife. And I can be a bit dramatic at times, you guys, but... But she has a high pain tolerance, so I know if she's saying something is hurting her. I was just it like, really hurts. you know, I have a male OB and he, you know, has larger hands than this young lady. And it doesn't, it didn't, it's never felt. And I've never had that know, kind that of pain. Way. And so I was very uncomfortable. I was yeah. clenching. They had to hold me down. She was grabbing my hand. Just to get the cervidil inserted. We, mind yeah. you, we're only here for an hour at this point. We haven't even done anything. Mm -hmm. So I was very, very uncomfortable from that. Yeah. However, we got through it. We got it in. It was okay. In. Um... And now we get to the point where we're waiting. Yeah, we're just waiting. And we're waiting. It was a long, a pretty long wait. Um, so we got it inserted. Without dilation. Right, at 625. Mm -hmm. And at about 3 o'clock in the morning, they did yeah. a check. And they basically said, you're still at one centimeter at di one centimeter. dilated. And, and at I'm, this point, she is feeling contractions. Right. She is feeling contractions. They're not as severe as they end up getting, but she's definitely feeling them. Feeling them to the point where she feels she should be at least like three to four at centimeters. Least. But baby was only one centimeter still. Right. They said my cervix was still long. I'm mm -hmm. just like, there's no way. Like, you guys are yeah. forcing these contractions mm -hmm. and my body just isn't ready. I mean, so, again, it's first pregnancy. So, you know, yeah. they always say baby is stubborn the first pregnancy. Your first time, it's the first time their body's going through anything. And so it's like, it's probably like, what the hell's going on? It's right. resisting, but... It's just what your body does. Yeah. And a lot of times you watch a lot of labor and delivery videos and you see young ladies basically doing home remedies to induce their labor. Mm -hmm. And that mostly helps when you're already dilating. Right. If your cervix is right. already reacting. Because again, right. dilation has to correlate with the contractions. You can't right. just have contractions and no dilation. You have, both. You have to have them the simultaneously. Same, same time, yeah. So I didn't want to use any castor oil or anything like that right. prior to coming in. Just because of the side effects of it, I didn't yeah. want baby to have a meconium poop inside of me. So I decided to go the medical way right. to get a real induction. And again, at the this point, as well. still yeah. wasn't working. Still wasn't working. Wasn't working. But baby is at, at this point... You know, a few more hours have passed, and she's now feeling contractions as if she's like eight, nine centimeters dilated. Right. So again, you know, this this cervidil makes you have contractions, so it makes your your uh, cervix dilate. She's just feeling the contractions. Cervix isn't dilating at all. So I'm just watching my baby suffer, guys. Like again, this is three o'clock in the morning. We had already inserted it, it at six twenty five p.m. before, so I expected to get another cervix check mm -hmm. at about 6 25 a.m mm -hmm. and that would have made 12 hours at the 12 hour mark i didn't get a check yet uh, mm -hmm. my doctor still hadn't been in there yet mm -hmm. i'm going through excruciating pain excruciating. um was... i couldn't even film i i was crying it was, i was it just was bad it was it was it was you know 500 times maybe it feels like it was more than 500 times worse than a period cramp yeah it was horrible it was, it was, as far as me being able to see her in that pain, I could tell it was horrible. Um, and I don't want to deter anybody right. who wants to You're labor naturally. To I just want to be transparent. Honest yeah. And transparent. For me. For her. I, I and think, again, it could have been maybe the cervidil that made, it, you know, right. because the labor wasn't completely natural, naturally done. You know, a lot of times the cervidil and the pitocin will make the contractions come harder. You know, that's why I know it was even worse for my babe. So right. all you women out there, you know, we have a regular, a regular labor. It may more than likely may not be as severe or intense as, or as intense. a as a induced as one an because induced labor. again, if you guys don't understand what an induction is, it's really like a forced labor. Mm -hmm. It's not something that naturally happens. Your body's not naturally right. triggering triggering to dilate, mm -hmm. so they're forcing it to happen. So I think yeah. had I gone in naturally, meaning my body was ready, right. then maybe it wouldn't be as intense. As intense. So, so just so that for time's sake, we're just gonna speed up a little bit. Okay. Basically, when it was about 10.25 a.m. So now we are about a little over 12 hours in. 
I know when we hit the 18 yeah, we hour were, I think mark. It might have been about 16. Yeah. I was in. Then all of a sudden, we you guys, I feel a pop. Right. And I hear a pop. Yeah, we could, we heard it. She was it already went, in, in pain. She was going through a contraction. At this point, she had turned to get on her hands and her knees. On her hands and her knees. And as soon as she she did that, you just heard a pop. You heard it. And you guys. And then, of course, you could see, you know, see it. All hell broke loose. This was my it water to break out. And it had a nice look. It had a good look to it. Right. So there you weren't know. any dark color. That yeah. We knew there wasn't any meconium. But guys, yeah. let me tell you. At this point, I still haven't gotten checked again since I was one centimeter dilated. In my mind, I felt like I was about eight centimeters at this point because right. the pain was unbearable. Yeah. And it so, got even more unbearable, you said, once the, the pop once, happened. Once, once the water once broke. The water broke. Keep in mind, outside of the induction medication, I had zero pain management. No, no pain gas management. mask, Nothing. no pills, no anything. You're just using, well, trying to use breathing techniques. Yes, and you know. just the support of baby, just being there yeah, for me. Man, you got to. It's and hard for so, me to see you like that, girl. They finally come in and they're going to check me again, but I was so apprehensive on getting the check that one of the nurses just said to me, Listen, I know your birth plan is to have a natural delivery, but sweetheart, you are giving us a hard time on a two-finger cervix check. You may want to consider some interventions mm -hmm. just because you've been laboring for 18 hours right. at this point with nothing. And right. at that point, I broke down. I cried just a little because I didn't want to feel like I was failing my wife right. or failing my plan or my and baby. And I let her know that. Listen... When a woman is giving birth, what they say is like, happen, how many bones fractured at the same like time? Like 25 bones fractured. Listen. It's sit up my birth, through, right? Listen, that's right. It's your birth. If you want to go through it, go through it. If you, you feel like you can't, then take the medicine. You're already a champ, man. You're already bringing forth life and to the world's population. Right. And I think that once she had that talk with me and my nurse was about to switch shifts, it was like uh, at 11 o'clock she was going to go home. And she said, just think about it. When I come back, you can let me know. Right. When she came back, my water had already broken. They were switching shifts. She said, I'll see you tomorrow. I'll be back this mm -hmm. time, if provided that you're still here. And I said, you know what? We've thought about it, and I need the epidural, need the epidural. at this point. At that point, it was almost 24 hours of just nonstop pain with almost no with no dilation. She, at this point, she's still one centimeter. Well, we got no, up no, to the 19th actually, hour. Yeah, we got up to the 19th hour. And at the 19th hour, they came in and checked us. Was and I was, no, I was five and five. five. They said you were four and a half, five four centimeters. Four and a half, five centimeters. Yeah, so and you a little bit more that's when the water broke. So I was like, broke. yes, I did it yes. without the medication. So now yeah. give me the medicine, okay? Getting to administering the medicine, I mean... Like, I wanted to give up. At this point, I'm just like, I can't even get the epidural because it's so much yeah. pain. And the contractions were coming back, back to back. back. As, she, as she's trying to get the epidural, as she's trying to sit up and scoot back, one contraction stops, another one's coming. So, right, champ, man. Champ, so, they man. administered the epidural, which was nothing. It's like a, I don't know, a mosquito bite to getting hit by a train. Like, it was like nothing. I'm telling about the shock that... Um, yeah. Sense. But it happens to some. He said it happens to some. He warned me that as he was prepping my back, that once he administered the needle, I would feel like a shock, like an electrical shock going through my leg. And the only thing I can compare this to is if you go to your physician or your doctor's office and they take the little hammer thing and bang your knee mm -hmm. and your reflexes uh, make your leg like shift. Right. So basically, immediately when he put the needle in my back, my instincts jumped, but not because I was scared of the needle. It was because my I had a literal shock go through my leg. Such like a shock. Bing, and I almost right kicked leg. you yeah. into the window. And the nurse. <laughs> and the nurse. The nurse had to catch you. Yeah, so I I, yeah. I moved, but I didn't move my back. I just moved my leg. Just the leg. The leg just kicked out. And that was just yeah. like yeah. still nothing. In those instances, I was having contractions probably about three minutes apart, and so the medicine wasn't working yet. So I was just screaming, when is it going to work? When is it going to work? When is it going to work? Yeah. When is it going to work? When it finally kicked in, it just was like a breath of fresh air. Right. Like, it still wasn't zero pain, right. but it was. I was able to breathe, yeah, like, for once. Yeah, to, like, chill for a second. <sighs> it was so exhausting. I feel like she was being tortured. Right. And again, right. so we're at hour 19. We're somewhere about... I don't know. It was about 
this point like two o'clock. Yeah. Okay. Um, PM. PM. So when we got to about four o'clock PM, which was only two hours later, mm -hmm. I went from five and a half centimeters to nine and a half. Uh -huh. Okay. And so two hours. Already. So a lot of people say that the epidural slows down your contractions. It slows down your labor. But for me, it yeah. sped it up. It's like sped it up. I went, it took me 19 hours to get to four and a half, five mm -hmm. and took two hours to get to nine and a half. From my, four or five. my doctor yeah. came in, he checked my cervix. I didn't have an issue that time when he checked it, there was one doctor prior to that, that checked mm -hmm. me and she was much more gentle. So I just wasn't dealing with that other lady. She just really traumatized me. Yeah. And so now he's like, yeah, you're going to be ready to push. Ready. And I'm like, no way. Yeah, you know it's time when they take that the, the, the end part of the bed and they pop it off. And they, they start putting those stirrups. stirrups. Yeah. And so at this point, my family's read. there. My mom came. My mm -hmm. brother came. And they're not used to seeing me in any kind of pain like this because they know I'm pretty, like, strong. Yeah. And they were just, like, looking at me, like, especially my brother, my younger brother. <laughs> He's just like, Cyan, you look yeah. awful. I had no makeup right. on. I was trying to get some makeup on while the epidural she was, was in. She was. I just, I don't know. So now it's time. To yeah. push baby. Um, the first set of pushes, doctor came in and said, listen, we're going to do some practice pushes. Mm -hmm. I want you to breathe and we're going to push when you're ready if you feel a contraction. We're looking at the contraction monitor and I'm just like, okay, I think I'm ready to push, but I didn't really feel anything. Yeah, but I wasn't completely right, numb, like how people say they can't right. feel nothing. I just felt pressure. I definitely was able to push. Mm -hmm. um, however, he mentioned on the first set of pushes, which were about nine of them, back to back and sets of three, he yep. said they were ineffective. He said right. her pushing level is ineffective. So I didn't know if it was me that wasn't pushing right. The baby's not ready. He said, I'm going to go take care of another person and I'll be back. Let your contractions get a little bit closer. Right. When I tell you this time at this point, again, it's about, I said two o'clock before now, it's about four. Our daughter was born at 625. So, I mean, it literally took him two hours to come back. Yeah. When he came back, I had, what, nine pushes? Yeah, about nine. Yeah, nine more pushes. Uh, three sets of three. Three sets of three. I remember it. Three sets of three. That last one, that ninth push. I remember baby said, we should go come out this time. Yeah. And I, I was remember. just like, and you push, you push it very well. Oh my might! At so this well. point, Taisha was using her head because my legs were numb and they're so heavy yeah, and hurt. And her hands were tired of holding them. So oh she was God. like, I, I felt my foot everything. going against her head, pushing backwards. It's a head my mom head is so little. She's yeah. like five feet holding my big ham hock legs. Had your head. She had your head. Pushing they were holding head my head up. I had up. one leg. The nurse had the other leg. And, and in my experience, the pushing was the most pleasant part of delivery. It was like, a relief. You said it, it was a relief. Yeah. I did not feel a ring of fire. I did not feel like... Um, Oh my God, my brain is like popping. It was perfect. Like the pushing was like the yeah. best part. It was easy. It didn't hurt to me. Even though I'm on the epidural, I'm still able to feel. Right. I felt the baby crowning and mm -hmm. her head came out. Um, I'm sure she did the shift. Yep, she definitely did. She turned. And then the body just popped out oh, in one wow. maneuver. It wasn't, it didn't feel like shoulder, shoulder, then body. It just was yeah. popped out. Okay, and then immediately after that, I I was just in shock. Like, all the pain just goes away. Like, I didn't think about anything. I'm just like, oh, my God, my baby, my baby, my yeah, baby, my baby, my baby. Yes, I got an episiotomy done. I think my doctor tricked me because he's like, do you he feel did. this? And I'm like, I no. Him. He said, you feel this, and he clamped, but he was just clamping air. And I was like, yeah. And he's like, do you feel this? And he's actually clipping uh, the section yeah. between he your rectum. He gave you a shot of lidocaine. Yeah. And shot of lidocaine. the episiotomy is just to enhance the baby kept coming out to help her get yeah. out. So they gave me a little cut. Yeah. And I didn't feel anything. So yeah. baby Champ, came right? out. And now it's time to deliver the placenta. It was just like... I'm gonna. We're gonna go ahead and insert a clip yes. because our doctor, Dr. Leah Boyce, he did a very, very good uh, informative video for us, um, speaking on the placenta, um, the purpose of it, um, where it was attached to, and showing how healthy my show, placenta he was. Showing how healthy it was. He'll show you the inside. He'll show where the hole was, where the rupture was, where the baby was. Man, I love this doctor. We're gonna put the clip in right now, and we'll be back. Be back. 
So the placenta came out as an inside-out glove. Okay. That's the cord that went to the baby. Okay. And I'm going to reverse the placenta so you can see everything. Okay. Need to find the hole where she broke her water bag. And the hole is right there. And I'm going to put it back. And that side was okay. attached to mommy. Okay. 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 And baby was inside this bag. Wow. And that was full of fluid. You see? Wow. And everything was closed. Yes. Exactly. That's amazing. So you see? That's amazing. Look at that, y'all. Yeah. So that side was attached to mommy. That side. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Wow. So there you have it. That was the placenta education. And Wasn't that informative? We thought that was very informative. very informative. Even though we couldn't film anything else, it was nice of him yes. to... Yeah, he, uh, like, he said, come on, you can get this. You go ahead and record if you want to. I like that. Because he, he really likes us. And it's, it's not, it wasn't him. It's just, you know, yeah. it's a private hospital, private hospital rules. But I love that video. And if you guys notice in our labor video, we did um, sneak in some clips as they were prepping Saisha and giving her yeah, shots. You few. would hear the doctor say, only videos, yeah. only pictures, right? We and we're like, yeah. We had to do that. So, you know, overall, you guys, this was an amazing, amazing. experience. It was very intense. Yes. It was much more than what we both expected. Yeah, much more. I feel like much empowered. More. I feel stronger than I've ever felt in my is life. It, is it true, baby, how they say, you know, you go through all that pain, but as soon as you give your, give birth to your baby and they lay, the, lay that baby on you, it all goes away. It all away. goes away. It was all worth it. And you she was so beautiful, over. you guys. And that's going to bring us she to our is. next video. Just we like are mama. going. Thank you. Just like her other mama. That's right. We are going to do a uh, two week update. We are going to show you Saisha. I'll talk to you guys yes, about sure, postpartum. And before we get out of here, I just wanted to include the part about postpartum in the hospital. And I'll get more into that yes. when we talk about our postpartum video. But they always tell you about the labor. They tell you about the delivery. They tell you about the nursery. They never tell you about recovery. I knew nothing about the um, checkups that were going to be happening. Uh, the right. baby being checked up um, while we're in, like, constantly, back to back to back. Mommy and baby, they go through so much poking and prodding. And that's the stuff that people really don't tell you about. Yeah, so in our next After video, that. when we discuss postpartum, I'm mm -hmm. going to go into that and how, you know, it affected us. And we're just so blessed to have our baby girl. Yeah, and so once again, each other. we just want to thank all of you guys. We appreciate each and every one of you guys for being here and supporting us on this journey. We're going to continue to be there and support you guys on y'all's. Yep, and if you have any questions about our labor and delivery story, I know it's all over the place. It's not scripted here. Yeah. We just wing it. We just, just let you know. Below. And let us know, and we'll answer any of your questions. Definitely. All right. So until the next good, time, good, 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 we'll see you later. Bye.